Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to our show. Did you ever watch the Amanda show on Nickelodeon? Wasn't Nickelodeon? Of course I did. Yeah. Just like on her bed, like, it's the Amanda show. I like when she did like, um, like the Dear Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. And she would just shout at people. Welcome to SOS. <laughs> That's That's, That's me. Anyway. Um, anyway. Okay. If you didn't grow up in the 90s, you already have tuned out. So. Um, we feel sorry for you. Yeah, we feel sorry for everyone who grew up in the 90s because the planet's dying and we're still here. Yeah, that's what, kind of what we're talking about today. Um, I was telling Molly about this last week. And let me know if you guys have been hearing about this, but the moon is wobbling. Okay, so when you first told me that, <laughs> I was like... We're going to die? Yeah, like what in the actual hell? But then turns out that's normal. It is normal. When it's shifting orbit, yeah. it is normal for it to have a wobble to it. However, when it's in conjunction with current climate climate change and what we are doing to the Earth, it's causing some issues. Yeah, it's causing issues. So the rising sea, sea levels, uh, it's basically because of this orbit change, it's just only going to get worse. So, and this comes right off the heels of all the flooding that was happening in Germany. Yeah. It's, there has been flooding happening, and this is only the beginning, and it's going to get worse. Um, it's okay. We're going to get positive by the end of this. Um, <laughs> it's going to get worse in the, in the 2030s. Oh, my God. In the 30s, I was going to say. Yeah, it is going to be the 30s. We're in the roaring 20s right now. So, yeah. So, it's going to get worse in the 30s. Um, and there's a lot of places. <laughs> so, it's going to affect every coastline mostly in the u.s but other places as well but uh, like the u.s coastlines are going to get fucked the most really every coastline, mostly the u.s yeah they say i think that there's some places like alaska i think will be fine <laughs> it's like great um, <laughs> but cool. yeah the coastlines are going to get fucked so uh there's a lot of things that i was reading about like what people are doing to kind of combat that mm. um a lot of, you know, things that you can do personally in your home, uh, but communities, cities, what they're doing. There's walls, um, sort of like dams that they're building, walls uh. that they're building. Um, really interesting one that I read that I forget what city is doing this, um, but it's in the U.S. and it's more environmentally sound, is creating pavement that's really absorbent. Oh. I've never heard of that before. Like how absorbent? Like would like it expand? Soups, soups absorb. I don't know. There's, I don't know the exact scientific. Uh, we're not scientists, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I'm not going to explain this. You guys probably thought way. we were. <laughs> Shocker. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like really interesting. So how it works, it was just it would absorb the water in the best way possible and then release it so it wouldn't cause flooding. It would just it, it basically helps combat flooding it would literally have to absorb so much water i'm confused but apparently it's a thing wow absorb in pavement it's like, right. I was like, like what, what is it like driving is it like driving on a sponge that's like as soon as it's absorbing like the whole like level of the sidewalk has to go up like two feet <laughs> um but like more scientific if you're like interested in this moon wobbling because i find it so fascinating that it can wobble and it sounds super apocalyptic, but in case you don't know the kind of science behind it, um, like scientists have been recording the this and, and been documenting the wobbling since se the 1700s. So like it's been going on for a while. So okay. it's all right. And it has the moon has an 18 year like cycle. It's like it, it has the, the wobble has 18 years to kind of change orbit it's very interesting so it will be wobbling for 18 years so yeah so right now we're in the second half of its wobble oh so it's been wobbling for nine years it's been wobbling <laughs> I'm confused. but we're in the second half of it now okay and and it, it just deeply affects our um our 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 sea levels so in the first half it does a lot of suppressing. So the high tides will be not as high and the oh, low tides will be higher. It's it weird. Did. It'll kind of do the opposite. Mm -hmm. and, but now as we're getting into the 30s, it's going to be now, it, which is like the second half. So so in like nine years, not now. Right. We're kind of like feeling like the beginnings of it right now. That's why it's like you see so, some of the flooding that's happening. Hmm. But uh, yeah. So like there was like a, 
an a NASA scientist that was talking about it. And he said, like, the, in the research, it's crucial to allow coastal areas to prepare for the uh, more flooded future. The combination of the moon's gravitational pull, rising sea levels, and climate change will continue to exacerbate coastal flooding on our coastlines across the world. So, it's not bleak. Well, it's not bleak, but it's also, I mean, that's, okay, so that's natural. The w moon wobbling as it changes orbit is natural. Mm -hmm. Not a concern. What is a concern is the record high temperatures and extreme droughts that are taking place yes because of actual climate change yes uh, the biggest thing that we could do uh as far as legislating and uh, is reducing emissions reducing emissions would help so yeah. much with rising sea levels i didn't realize like that specifically See, was an issue i knew climate change of course but like with the the moon's wobbling and rising sea levels reducing emissions re emissions are literally the number one that's the issue with humanity yeah. on this planet. Yeah. Like that's tied to everything. And while we have notes on this episode about um, specifically for Californians, because Newsom mm -hmm. um, encouraged households to reduce water consumption by 15%. Um, and, and that is not, I'm not trying to like make small that difference. Like it's important. Yes. Like check for leaks in your faucets, take shorter showers. Every mm -hmm. little bit does help. However, I'm also really fed up with just these like microscopic steps that humanity is like <laughs> is complacent in like yeah oh I just I just took like a two minute shorter shower and yes while that might save like maybe 10 gallons of water five gallons of water and every little bit counts blah 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 we are capable of so much more I know so much more and we're kind of brainwashed into thinking like Oh, I only water my yard two times a week, not three. I, I am doing something. And it's like, you are, but you're not doing nearly enough. And it is not something to be celebrated because we are still ruining our entire planet. I know. It's <laughs> something that I think about a lot. And, uh, you know, ever since if you, you know, are an OG listener and you've been listening for a while, we had a really great episode talking more about this with LP. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. She's so great. She actually moved to the West Coast now. I'm actually yeah. seeing her tonight. Oh, um, and uh, it was a really great episode and kind of put into perspective because she worked for New York, um, what they were doing and why New York is just so much more progressive when it comes to climate change and, and being yeah. active. And so is Paris. Paris yes. is like one of the top. It's just like there are already blueprints mm -hmm. for how cities can be more efficient and how individuals can be more efficient uh, in, in major cities in the world. And then other major cities in the world, such as Los Angeles, yeah, it's not like we have to make up this genius. Way. There are blueprints. There are cities already implementing these things that are make that are working. And why don't we do it like that? <laughs> I know. I I really do feel like for a lot of people, and maybe because we're Californians, we know a lot more people that are more conscious about mm -hmm. it. Being where we are, you know, it's very green and trendy, but like. I feel like for a lot of people, they don't want to give up their normal way of life. Yeah, it's 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 too much of selfishness. a selfishness. Yeah, it's it's just too much and for them. California, yeah, California is progressive in a, in a lot of ways and and in environmental realms too. But then there's also this like detrimental mindset here where it's like everyone's obsessed with their avocado toast, but the amount of water it takes so to grow much. avocados, I know. like you just think there, there's a difference between being health and conscious almonds. and green and then like yeah then we're just eating a bunch of almonds and avocados but that's actually damaging the environment too but you just want to be on your california tip and i don't know i think we all just need to check ourselves and everyone wants these perfectly green lawns i myself am an exceptionally visual aesthetic person if i yeah. had a lawn i too would want it green however what i did learn from my dad specifically he's a botanist and um he is when we were growing up we had a big yard like an acre of land um and only the first little bit of it outside of our deck was grass and the rest was native plants only and so it wouldn't we weren't watering an acre of like grass it was actually native plants that could grow there naturally and thrive and have a beautiful landscape I in the back that. but without having to like california's or southern california is a desert Tropical plants are not, we are not a tropical climate. Palm trees aren't native here. 
These tropical plants that you see all over LA are not native and they require a lot of water. And it's not, I didn't even know this. My dad told me this on one of his trips out here because I don't, I, I'm not informed about this stuff and a lot of people aren't. And he was telling me, he's like, yeah, these, I mean, it's kind of obvious. Obviously, when you think about it, we are in a desert. We are not in a tropical climate, but we're used to seeing tropical plants. They're everywhere. And then people start to think like, oh, those grow here. No, they don't. And the amount of water it takes to maintain that and people want it in their yard and there's all these beautiful tropical plants and flowers. And if we worked with the earth in, in harmony with the native species of that area and just like let that flourish, we would be using a lot less resources yes. just to have a different plant in our yard. Yeah. This reminds me exactly of that quote that I love when I was showing you the earth ships. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there's these amazing Those houses. Are so cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mom, oh. I hope you're listening to this because you and dad would love this. Yeah. Look this up. Well, so I'm going to be there next month. Oh, yeah. Should I do like a, like a, yes. like a, a oh. um, what is it called? A, like a little blog? Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Tune in. So I'm going to this thing in New Mexico, and me and Ryan just absolutely love New Mexico, Tau specifically. Um, but there are these buildings called or houses called earth ships and this guy makes a bunch of them and there are a lot in New Mexico and there's a lot in like Puerto Rico and he a lot of invented places. them, right? Yeah, I, w I want to say so. He's he definitely like a huge okay. name in the, in the world of, of these houses and they're very they're, they're strange looking. Don't get me wrong. They're not like, yeah, they look know, like spaceships on Earth, <laughs> which is like. <laughs> You know, we love aliens. Yeah. <laughs> I am down. Um, but it is completely like everything that is made, everything that makes this house is used from recycled material. So tires, like all the walls are made with tires. Like I, I've literally seen, every piece of it. Yes. It, Alyssa showed me these YouTube videos of glass of it. bottles. And, and there's a, I don't know if they all have this, but yeah. like it's temperature. It regulates it is, its own yeah. temperature by putting like, a buffer zone of kind of like a greenhouse area in between the outside and the inside that you live in. Yep. And it has its own air filtration system and, and it cools itself down yep. by having this like buffer zone with plant. It's so cool. It's amazing. Completely self-sustainable, right? Completely self-sustainable, solar powered. Yep. So you have your own little greenhouse in there so you can live off the fat of your own land. You can grow your own. Yeah. Yep. Composting is available and um, the, the well system is is uh oh, I, I self sustaining too. Yes, everything is just so it's it's amazing. And we just fell in love with this idea. And it, it allows you you were saying it allows you to really live off the grid because you yes. don't you're not dependent on like it's solar panels and it's in composting and you have you're not dependent on the normal systems that mm -mm. cities and towns are. And especially millennials buying houses it, it's very foreign idea for us yeah. because we weren't set up to be able to buy houses. We just aren't. Um, so a lot of a lot of us aren't thinking about that. But as we kind of are thinking about that in our 30s, married, and we're like, oh, w w do we see ourselves as home buyers? If it's an earth ship, fuck yes. Mm -hmm. I like. I can't imagine spending the fucking and it's also affordable. That's an amazing thing. He That's makes crazy. It crazy affordable. It's only a, like a few hundred thousand, which is nothing compared to the size of which they're they are and like yeah. how much you're able to live off your the fat of your own land and they're essentially. beautiful the ones you showed me that like they're made out of like natural like you said recycled tires and also glass and there's stained glass and there's yes. plants everywhere it's beautiful and gorgeous. gorgeous like the light filters through and and you're very much like you're not secluded from the landscape you're in like you're in your house and your earth ship but it it's like integrated with the landscape around you. Yep, absolutely. Um, so please Google Earthship so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and I'm forgetting the guy's name, forgive me, but he was talking about this, you know, him making these Earthships and why he wants to make them, like what inspired him. And he had this really amazing quote where he basically was like, you know, it's our duty as we live on this earth to, to treat it with respect and to live in an Earthship is to um in, it, you're encountering the earth oh, yeah. like it, it's really beautiful way to think about your existence here mm -hmm. and like and and what we kind of not to sound like a hippie but like how it's our duty to kind of yeah respect we're like we're not here to 
dominate into submission yeah. this this landscape we are here to encounter it and live with it, it. yeah mm-hmm. and, and like living in a sh- in an earth ship is, is a that. way to do it so i don't know i i just please look it up it's it's just a really great way to spend mm-hmm. your money if you're going to spend your money on a house yeah look into that stuff um and they're everywhere but yes as we were saying we're in a drought <laughs> right now <laughs> in california but and, literally, uh, I've been hearing that ever since I moved here 10 years ago. Same. I know, yeah. <laughs> so weird. And then, I, I remember when I first, it's so funny, first visited here in 2014. I mean, right, we're just dating. We visited his family. And it, it was a really bad drought in 2014. I, I mean, it's been a dr- bad drought yeah. off and on in, in here. But I remember at that time specifically, it was pretty bad. And they, we had a rule where it's like, if it's yellow, leave it mellow. Oh, yeah. Crap, push it down. So we were doing that. And it was like a house... A, big family in one yeah. house yeah. and there was also a rule of like shower together uh, like if you're gonna shower shower together so we're like okay <laughs> so we that's funny wow i don't know if they were fucking with us <laughs> they're like they're eh. very naughty um <laughs> but yeah <laughs> we that's did. funny and it hey whatever I mean, hey whatever um but and you know what's fucking i was just telling molly about this in my like drought research they're water thieves in this state Okay, I hadn't even heard of that, and I was asking Alyssa, I'm like, who are they? So I'm going to read about this. Shout out to weather.com. We'll link them, I guess, but this is basically... I guess. <laughs> guess. If they need the shit. Yeah. Weather. Shout out weather.com. <laughs> okay. Shout out the World Wide Web. <laughs> Shout out Internet Explorer. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to fucking... Okay. So more than 12 billion gallons of water estimated to have been stolen across the state since 2013. That's only eight years. And 12 billion gallons of water has been uh, stolen. There's like water thieves, water gangs. But what I'm trying to understand is... <laughs> What are they doing with it? Who are they? I, I really they think farmers? there's like a black market water. No, because so it's impacting legitimate legitimate farming operations. So the fact that they're naming it legitimate farming operations makes me think there's illegitimate mm. farming operations, which yeah. goes to what you were thinking. Um, so it also impacts drinking water sources, Native American tribes, which is fucking awful, and small communities. Officials say the thieves are getting their hands on water by breaking into secure water stations, drilling into water lines, tapping into fire hydrants, and using violence and threats against farmers, making off with truckloads of water for their crops under cover of darkness. Oh, my God. Is this like a Robin Hood situation? Like, are, maybe they're, that oh, no, be- well, they're, they're hurting the indigenous maybe, population. Exactly. Because I'm like, I don't know, maybe you should, st- maybe the water thieves should start going to, like, like, Huntington Gardens where they're keeping everything green and just, like, take it to communities that need water i just like love that idea of just like water thieves in <laughs> under the, the cover of darkness so let's get into some tips that you can do at home like we said this is like the fucking bare minimum i know it's, it's like do. embarrassing because everyone th- just turn your faucet off when you're brushing your teeth but like <laughs> yeah these things are all true and they're important and do more do and we not have, count this as your oh i've done my duty right and we have a lot of uh listeners that aren't in california so Although these are kind of California specific, we're going to get into a, a nonprofit at the end of this. So stay tuned where you can actually do something from where you're at. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you should still be honestly do conscious. this wherever. Yeah, you're do at. this wherever. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> first, um, this is a lot of I never noticed this. I'm trying to think of if my toilet does this, but basically check for leaks in faucets and toilets. A toilet leak can amount to 30 gallons <laughs> Per day, which is so fucking crazy. The number of leaks can vary considerably, but an average toilet leak will waste about 30 gallons per day. In extreme cases, a running toilet can leak as much as 4,800 gallons, uh, more than 23 times the daily average household usage. Other possible sources of leak is like shower heads and sinks and sprinklers and pipes. And and large leaks are easier to detect, but you might notice it if you get extraordinarily a large like water bill. So it's like homeowners Mm. out there. I don't know if you're out there. Or maybe, you know, renters can get water bills, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't even like no anymore. Um, I'm like, you just take my money. I don't know what I'm paying for. Um, if you hear any dripping noises, ghost flushes, I've actually heard that before. Weird. Um, in which, <laughs> in which a toilet makes a flushing noise, but no one is using it. For smaller leaks, you can also turn off all the running water and check the water meter to see if it still changes. 
<laughs> um, she got really Californian there. Sorry, guys. I'm Chanda. so embarrassed about my. <laughs> um, water your garden one fewer time a week. Yeah, that's what we were saying. Yeah. Um. So this could save about 260 gallons of water and watering yard three times a week. For this is for an average Bay Area household. Um, but it takes about 780 gallons to water it three times a week. So watering twice a week would save 260 gallons. Um, hotter regions or larger lawns may require more water. Obviously, um, avoiding the hotter times of day could also make water in your garden more efficient. Also, a bigger impact than any of that would be um, putting native plants in your yard. Yeah, because, we get it. Oh, we get into that too. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really that's even more important. Hundred uh, percent. I wish I had a yard. I know. Um, <laughs> What's a yard? <laughs> so reduce shower time by two minutes. This could save 12 to 15 gallons a day. An average California shower head spews two to 2.5 gallons of water per minute, which amounts to more than 20 gallons of water during a 10 minute shower. I always do Ugh. 10 minutes. What do you do? Depends what it depends if I'm doing a full shave and situation. Don't get Exfoliation, me started. Exfoliation, shave situation. But if I'm just like washing my hair. Yeah. Like yeah. 10, yeah. yeah. I'll do. Yeah. I can get to 20 for when I'm doing a full situation. Oh yeah. Situation. If I'm doing like a whole. Because I'll do it. I have to do a hair mask. Sometimes I'll like go back into the shower for a hair mask. But sh and showers for me, the <laughs> thing hard. is like, it also depends if you're doing just like just a 10 minute shower every day, or if you're doing a 20 minute shower every other day, that's the same. Yeah. And so it's just kind of like how I don't wash my hair every day. No. But then like there how are days. How often do you wash your hair? Every other day. Oh. How often do you? Once every eight days. I wish. Are you kidding me? I can't do that. Mine oh, no. gets too it is oily. Not great. No, that's it's not good. No, my it's hair good. is fu yes, but my hair is still eh. No, it's healthy. It's healthier to go longer. Yeah. Mine is just really like mine will get o too oily. Yeah. You have shorter hair too. Yeah. Mine's like a little bit longer, so I can like I'm oh, trying I to wish get it all I could. to my roots. Sometimes I can go two days without it, but like I need to, unfortunately. But it, that's all like up to hair texture, obviously. But then it's like there are showers are also for me, I shower at night. It's like a wind down mm -hmm. thing. It's mm -hmm. not like a cold morning jolt wake up for me. I, I mean, I do it after a workout too, but like showers for me are like my time. Like that is, and, and even shower. after I get out of the shower, like lotion, body oils, that's like no one disturbed me. Those are, that is my time. And so I, I respect it as a ritual for yourself. There are still ways to have that ritual and not be just, wasting resources down the drain at the same time like even if you have a hair mask in or like shaving just you can turn the water off while you're doing that yep uh, yeah if each person in the household could shorten their showers by two minutes an average household would save around 12 to 15 gallons per day and that's a shit ton yeah that's a lot um what are we is that we just yeah oh yeah so turn off the sink tap while Ugh. brushing your teeth or shaving this could save 24 to 30 gallons of water a day so um Water from sink faucets flows at two and a half gallons per minute. So if you spend mm. like a minute and a half brushing your teeth, and my electronic toothbrush is on a two-minute yeah. timer, yep, mine leaving too. the water running the whole time can waste around four to five gallons because if, yeah. Um, if you brush your teeth twice a day and keep the faucet closed, you could save around eight gallons. And these are, like I said, they're small, but they're really, they're not insignificant at the same time. It's yeah. like... I, I have a truth on this. Yes actually recent i mean like recent because of this episode but also just been on my mind i ryan i'm about to about to call him out ryan will leave sinks on huh and walk out of the room and forget what and it drives me molly. no <laughs> molly it drives me fucking crazy no it drives me crazy so i actually how I, do you do that you know what i've done recently and i was like okay molly's coming over so i'm just gonna like hide this i put up sticky notes on the faucets <laughs> yes, that says yes. turn up i'm not kidding you. i would do that too i'm so embarrassed i also i'm like no they, what he should be embarrassed right he should be embarrassed he, he should knows. be embarrassed he knows but it's like Ugh. how though the sound of it i i have no idea going. how you can also literally off. if i there's no way i could have gotten through my childhood and done that i was literally no. oh, yeah 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 my parents and the way my i like even even the heat like my mom, dad, and brother would walk around in down booty slippers, puffer jackets, and hats in the house, and I'd be in like a hoodie in the winter, and want to turn the heat up, and they just say put more clothes on, and I'm yeah. like, 
but you guys are dressed for snow, but we're inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, walking away from a faucet when it's turned on, I wouldn't have survived this far in life. How dare you, Ryan? Hey, Ryan, Ryan's how do you do that? Sh- <laughs> oh, um, that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, wash loads of dishes, full loads, sorry, of dishes using a dishwasher. This could save around 50 gallons per wash so basically if you have dishwasher if you're fucking fancy <laughs> letting the water run do you have a dishwasher no fucking fancy <laughs> letting the water run well we're, we're fancy letting yeah. the water run while we're uh while doing your dishes would use oh interesting well use while doing your dishes would use two to 2.5 gallons of water per minute which would amount to more than 60 gallons if the task takes half an hour on the other hand experts say a dishwasher instead of just washing your dishes manually, Mm. generally uses six to 10 gallons of water per load, although it can uh, vary wildly depending on the type. Therefore, washing a full load of dishes with a dishwasher could save 50 gallons per wash. (laughs) I'm so mad. If you don't have a dishwasher, you can conserve water by turning off the faucet when you don't need the water running. So we're we're pretty good at that. Mm -hmm. Ryan does most of the uh, dishwashing, um, which is like, good for him. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) we stand. You do the cooking. Yeah. But... He's also the type that just lets it go and he walks away. Yeah, I cannot believe that, really. So I well, so the sign's been working okay so far. We'll keep you updated, but it's (laughs) the sign, yeah, the post it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's funny. Um, same goes for washing clothes, full loads of clothes. Yeah. Um, one fewer load a week could save five gallons of water per day. So obviously it varies by machine as well. Um average washing machine in the US uses about 36 gallons of water per load. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, and so by reducing one load of laundry per week, you could save five gallons of water per day. I f- see when there's like a shirt, let's say, that gets a stain on it. And I have washer dryers in my building, but not in my unit. And so I can't speak to like maybe if I had one in my unit. Like I, maybe I would, but I'm also like, so, so no judgment because that would be way easier. But also there's like, it's so easy to just like soak something in the sink, use a little stain remover, do something in the sink or the tub and just hang it over your shower to dry if there's one thing that got dirty as opposed to just doing a whole load, 36 gallons per load and you're washing like three t-shirts and a pair of jeans. Like it's, do full loads, people. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you know those portable washing machines? Mm-hmm. Well, there's portable dishwashers for sure, but the portable washing machines, I feel like they're electric. Um, I don't know. They're on Amazon. I kind of like, oh. I feel like promoting something on Amazon is like counterintuitive to like <laughs> I'm not climate a change. Perfect person. <laughs> oh, but also in like a lot of places that we've traveled and lived abroad growing up, um, a lot of countries or the flats we lived at or the hostels or whatever, it was like they would have a little washer and no dryer mm. and you just hang dry and that saves so much energy you can still do your loads in a washer and hang dry and yeah it's more times less convenient you need a place to dry it like if i were in my apartment now i honestly don't have a place to hang dry but just per where you are there are other options we actually hang dry our stuff you do yeah we have uh, we use our balcony uh-huh. and then we'll just like this is we did our laundry yesterday we'll just put it all around yes i, I hang stuff on my bookshelf and stuff but i don't have a balcony yeah, any yeah, more yeah. space for like sheets yeah, but yeah, that's helps. an option too because you can still, it's not like abandon your washers and dryer because that actually doesn't, they're more efficient than washing a whole load in the sink. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just be aware. Um, oh yeah, so upgrade your utilities as well. And this is main, mainly for homeowners, landlords, whatever. For example, a newer, newer toilet could save 33 gallons a day. A more efficient shower head. Also, we just got a new one that we love. I could use a new one. Yeah, it's really good. Uh. It, Amazon, not a perfect person, um, which has been required in California since 2018, spews out 1.8 gallons of water per minute, which is less than older ones that release 2 or 2.5 gallons per minute. That means one person could save up to 7 gallons of water a day, even if they take the same length of shower. Changing your Mm. old pre-90s toilet to a newer one could also save 33 gallons a day. Also, for all my bougie listeners, I'm one as well. You can get a new faucet and then have one that filters yeah. water that's better for your hair and skin. I know. That's when what I, we got. When I, did you? When I first moved to L.A., my, my roommate and I, we just moved out here, both of us, 
some of the worst adult acne I've ever had yeah. and her as well. Yeah. And we both came from Denver to LA and we were like, couldn't figure it out. We, we were like, what are, is it something we're eating? What's going on? What's going on? And we were trying, it was happening to both of us and it was really bad. And then someone recommended that we get a filter for our bathroom sink, not even our shower, our bathroom sink. Cause we're washing our faces mm-hmm. and kid you not, both of our faces cleared up instantly. And that was so disturbing because now I don't use one. So now my face is just that used to this dirty city water. Molly, I'm having literally an epiphany right now that that's like, I've been breaking out all the time. And we've been noticing, this is like part of the issue that I've told, I was with our apartment. Mm -hmm. Part part of the issue is that we've been smelling. We don't live in squalor, I promise. Um, (laughs) (laughs) We've been smelling our Sewage. sewage. And it's getting bad. And not only that, like every day I'm, I'm smell like I'll, I'll wash, wash my face when around, you brush my the teeth. On. It smells like rotten eggs, which is yes. just straight up sulfur. Yeah. And I've been freaking out and I'm like, it's, it's the water. I think it's the fucking water. And you water. can put it's a getting little worse. attached like thing to your bathroom sink I need, filter I need that. and just wash your face through that. And oh I'm my not God. even kidding you. It cleared me I didn't even me think up. about that. Yeah. That is, th- that it could be that it's water. It's so disturbing. It's really disturbing. Um, and I've been like getting new face washes. Like yeah. I'm thinking, I'm like, oh no, my God, I literally did product. everything. I was like, it's the climate. I'm just getting used to a dryer. No. Supplements. I'm taking so many yes. supplements. I'm t- <laughs> 